Some of the discourses give an impression that the practice is a smooth, upward incline. One sure-footed step after another. It goes progressively up and up and up. Fortunately, there are other passages in the canon which remind us that it's not a steady progress. There are ups and downs. Read some of the passages, especially in the Tarakata and Tarikata. About the monks and nuns complaining that the practice would go well for a while and then it would crash. Go well for a while and then it would crash. <coughs> One month, commenting on this had happened so often that he was ready to commit suicide. Things had gotten so bad. The purpose of those passages is to remind you that no matter how bad things get, it is still possible to get awakening in each of these cases where the monks and the nuns had run amok from their dwellings. crazed over the ups and downs of their practice, they finally got themselves together and were able to attain awakening. This is why it's good to take encouragement from these stories. Back in the 19th century, it was popular for people to read Lives of Great Men. was considered an essential part of your education to see their examples, how they'd been through many, many hardships and yet hadn't lost heart. Finally come out on top. With modern literature, there are a lot of anti-heroes, people you don't want to take as examples. And it's a shame that we've lost that part of our literature. Nowadays you see it mainly in like the recent periodicals, talking about the recent campaigns. Even the most well-oiled campaign machine would have its ups and downs. And it's instructive to read about how people handle the downs, to realize that when things get bad, it's not the end of the world. You stop and take stock. Or you read about expeditions like Shackleton's down to Antarctica. Things got really bad. Even before they could get to Antarctica, the ship was locked into the ice and they had to walk off the ice dragged their dinghies behind them, and then set out across the ocean. Most of them thought they were doomed. But even when they thought they were doomed, one thing that kept them going was their sense of discipline. Realizing that as long as you stay disciplined, you can take advantage of whatever opportunities do come. So that's the first lesson to take from these, these stories, is that strong sense of discipline. What you do is you get back to basics. And you try to maintain a certain consistency in your practice. Those are the two main lessons. Back to basics. Remind yourself of why you're here. You're suffering. And this is the way out. And what is that way out? The, the Buddha says, right view comes first. When his analysis of dependent core rising, the prime factor is ignorance. You don't see things in terms of the Four Noble Truths, and your attention goes wandering off all, all sorts of other places. Or if you do have little bits and pieces of knowledge, it's just that, little bits and pieces. 
So you're going to put these two principles together. You're here to gain knowledge. Look at things in terms of the Four Noble Truths. Where is there stress right now? What are you doing that's causing it? What actions help to alleviate it? And then just learn how to apply that consistently. Bring more awareness. Not just any kind of blanket awareness. Ask those questions in particular. Where is the stress right now? And just try to make your questioning more and more consistent. Or if it strings you out to focus on the stress, okay, where are the good things right now? What can you rely on as your path? If there's a little bit of mindfulness, hold on to it. Right speech, right action, all the rights of the noble path. Hold on to what you've got. Realizing that the situation inside and out may not be what you like, but your way out of here is by holding on to the path here, these states of mind. Even if it's just that simple ability to stay aware, stay aware. Not get entangled in the storylines and narratives and all the other crazy ideas that the mind keeps churning out for itself. So when things don't look good, try to get some perspective by reminding yourself, what are the basics? Why are you here? What is this all about? It's about developing some skills, learning how to comprehend your stress and suffering, learning how to abandon the cause when you can see it, learning how to develop the good factors of the path, and whatever qualities of mind reinforce that path. Endurance is important. It's the part that gives the consistency to the path. Because it's not the case that simply following the path one hour for a night is going to do the trick. Or on again, off again. That doesn't help at all. It helps, but it's not. It doesn't build up the momentum you need. The momentum, the momentum comes with sticking with things over time. It's like planting a tree. If you plant the tree and water it only occasionally, or water it just once and forget about it, the tree is not going to survive. You have to be consistent looking after it. You're committed to looking after it. That's how it grows. Or breathing. You breathe consistently. It's not that you say, I'm going to breathe for an hour today and then just forget about it. We often do forget about it, but fortunately the body takes over and breathes for us. But if you just breathe for an hour today and that was it, you'd be dead. So take some lessons from the breath and since it's consistent, it keeps coming in, going out, whether you pay attention to it or don't pay attention to it, whether you like it or don't like it, it's there. It keeps coming in, going out, keeping you alive. Take that as a lesson for the mind. You've got to be consistent. Just stick with the basics, even though they're not yielding the exciting results that you'd like to see. Remember, nobody promised it was going to be exciting all along the way. When the practice has its ups, you have to be heedful. When it gets down, you have to be heedful. You can't be complacent either way. In other words, when things are going really well, you can't assume that they're going to continue to go really well. You can't let yourself get complacent, careless. Keep bringing awareness very, very consistently, moment by moment by moment, to what's happening. If it's going well, do what you can to keep it going well. 
when things are not going well, again, you can't be heedless. You can't let your mind be taken over by all of its negativity. It'll have lots of things to complain about. This is not right place to practice. These are not good people to practice with. This is, this is on and on and on. Diverting your attention from the real problem, which is that you're not paying careful attention to what the mind is doing. The mind is a very clever politician. It can very quickly distract itself from what's really going on. This is why the Buddha said it. You attain completion through heedfulness. Being very careful, uncomplacent. That's the discipline that will see you through. That expedition that Shackleton ran. Remember getting into a disagreement with someone who said, well, the Shackleton made all sorts of wrong decisions. His people shouldn't have listened to him. Well, if they hadn't listened to him, the, the whole thing would have fallen apart. People would have died. And he got people through, even though he did make mistakes. Your sense of discipline is what can correct for those mistakes, to make sure that they're not disastrous. So always remember, when there's a problem, more awareness is required. That means that you have to pay more careful attention to what's happening. Everything you need to know for awakening is right here. All the factors are right here. Simply that at the moment they're out of control, they're causing suffering. When you learn how to bring them into control, this process of fabrication, for example, you can turn it into the path. Many of the elements of dependent core arising have the potential to become path factors. So it's all right here. When you get bored or discouraged with the practice, remind yourself it's because you're not paying careful attention. You're letting your expectations get in the way or your moods get in the way. Something's getting in the way, so you're not really seeing what's going on. So this combination of awareness and consistency makes you pay more and more careful attention to those issues and the Four Noble Truths. The truths are not truths about something, they're ways of looking. You can apply it to anything that's going on in the mind. You can watch all the crazy thoughts in the mind. If you do it from the perspective of the Four Noble Truths, knowledge can arise. Learn to find what in the mind you can rely on as a path factor. That will give you the strength you need. The ability not to get discouraged by events comes down to your ability to keep talking to yourself with the right tone of voice and keep saying the right things to yourself. That's what right view is all about. Remind yourself that no matter how bad things get or how long the dry stretch seems to be, it's not the end. The possibility for knowledge is always there. This is one of the amazing things about the mind. It's always aware. There's always that potential for knowledge, understanding. And sometimes it may seem weak, but it's there, and you can encourage it. That's how, when things get bad, you can become your own best counselor, your own best advisor. So when things crash, not everything gets crashed.
that determination not to keep on suffering. That'll see you through. John Munn talked about that apparently in his last major sermon. The one thing you hold on to all the way through the path is this determination, determination not to come back and be the laughing stock of the defilements ever again. Not having to suffer ever again. The Buddha calls us taking yourself as your governing principle. Remind yourself that you are suffering and you're here to find a way out. And so you discard your unnecessary baggage and hold on to the hold on to the basics. Awareness, consistency, careful attention. Those are the things that'll see you through.